Hello and welcome to Drishti ISN News. My name is Neil. Today, the topic which we are going to discuss is new pace in India-France relations. This is how we are going to proceed with the discussion. Uh, we will first discuss the new pace in India-France relations. So, the news on the basis of which we are saying that these relations have acquired a new pace. So, what is the news? A new agreement has been signed between India and France. We will discuss the highlights of the agreement. And then we will go to the history of India's India and France relations. And then we will highlight the current geopolitics, the current global scenario in which these relations acquire special significance. And then we will try to reach a conclusion based on the discussion done till here. Then you will have a question to practice your answer writing on. So, this was the news. India and France, they signed a roadmap to enhance bilateral exchanges on blue economy and ocean governance. However, blue economy and ocean governance were not the only two things on which this agreement, this roadmap was agreed upon. We will see it in detail. So, what were the things? Mainly, India and France agreed to increase their bilateral blue economy exchanges. Blue economy, we know a word which gained currency post-2010, especially after a famous book by this very name came out. So, blue economy refers to the use of oceanic and marine resources in a sustainable manner for a sustainable future for, for populations across the world. So, this is what blue economy is in the simple form. So, this is where India and France both have agreed to collaborate. Why? Because they both have a huge coastline. Then France has so many possessions in the Indian Ocean. One among them, we know Reunion Island is very famous. So, both these countries, they have a certain vision for blue economy and that is why they want to collaborate on this front. Then, they are also collaborating or have agreed to establish a common vision of ocean governance based on the rule of law. Now, you know that there is a UN clause, United Nations Convention on Law of Seas. Both this, this clause Union clause came under discussion while these countries were uh, agreeing to sign this roadmap. Why? Because both these countries have stakes in the Indo-Pacific region and we know that China has been very assertive in this region and countries across the world including India, US, they blame that China is not following the certain well laid out rules which is commonly referred to as rule of law in the oceanic system. So, United Nations Convention on Law of Seas has laid, laid down certain rules. We don't, we won't go into the details of those laws, but both these countries said that we want oceanic governance or oceans governed by rule of law and not by arbitrary display of raw power. Also, both these countries agreed to collaborate on sustainable and resilient coastal and waterway infrastructure. This is self-explanatory. And this agreement was signed uh, while our external affairs minister, Jay Shankar, he visited France. So, Jay Shankar, Mr. Jay Shankar has been a on, on a visit to Europe. He visited Australia some time back, then he went to Europe, he visited Germany and presently he is in France. So, this is when this agreement was signed. Now, what are the highlights of the agreement? So, they, these countries, they agreed to co coordinate their positions in multilateral bodies and negotiations to strengthen international law of the sea and adapt to new challenges. We discussed this point that why both of these countries, they want to focus on negotiations which want to maintain a rule of law in the seas. Other thing is both these countries have agreed that they will support each other in multilateral forums like United Nations, like World Trade Organizations because they believe they both share common values like democracy, free market, etc. Also, these countries said that they will coordinate in the upcoming session of United Nations Environment Assembly. What is United Nations Environment Assembly? Basically, it is the decision-making body, the decision-making body of United Nations Environment Program, the entity which uh, brings out reports like Global Energy Outlook Report, Emissions Gap Report, the world's top agency working on environmental matters. 
So, there is an upcoming session. Both of these countries have said that they will coordinate in this upcoming session on what issues for a global agreement on marine plastic waste and microplastic. We know microplastics are uh, used in so many industries like cosmetics, etc., etc., and they pose a great danger to marine ecosystem. They have found their way to the marine ecosystem and now they pose danger to it. So, both of these countries have agreed to collaborate on that. And then there is an agreement to enhance bilateral exchanges on blue economy and oceanic governance and respecting the environment and coastal and marine biodiversity while it's self explanatory. Now, as we said, that both of these countries have huge coastlines, have, their, have stakes in the marine ecosystem. So, they have agreed to work on a sustainable approach to fishing. They also have promised to share knowledge, methodologies, cooperate on developing domestic waterways, enhance scientific cooperation. Scientific cooperation we will discuss further when we will discuss the space cooperation between the two countries, then facilitate administrative procedures like visa, infrastructure enhancement, navigational aids, river information system, etc. Nothing very important here. The important things will come later. Again, the important things including some of these which we just mentioned. Then, there is a plan to organize annual bilateral dialogue on blue economy and ocean governance. Then, both these countries also decided to extend their support to United Nations dec Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development 2021 to 2030. So, more relevant news from what we have discussed till now was blue economy. Both these countries have decided to come together on the issue of blue economy and the governance of oceanic lanes based on the rule of law. These were the two most important things which we discussed. Now coming back to India-France bilateral relations, we will go back to the history, not very far back, especially post 90s, 90s after the end of Cold War, France was among the first countries with which India signed a strategic partnership agreement. Basically, during the times of Cold War, France, obviously being a country of Europe, was on the side of United States. So, India did not share very good relations with or very cordial relations with France because there was a Cold War mentality of not trusting those countries who held special positions during that Cold War. But after the Cold War ended, France was among the first countries which India signed a strategic partnership. Then, France was also among the very few European countries which, when India conducted its own nuclear tests, supported India because France always raised this point that the global nuclear order holds no relevance till a country like India is given its rightful position in that order. So, when India conducted its own tests in 1998, after which so many sanctions were placed on India, France were few of the sympathetic countries towards India. So, this is why there is some, something special in the relationship of India and France. Also, of late, India and France has been, have been conducting several defense exercises. One of them is Shakti. Shakti is a defense exercise between India and French army. Then, there is exercise Varuna, which is between Navy, of navies of France and India, and then Garuda. So, Shakti, Varuna and Garuda. These are the three exercises which are conducted between Army, Navy and Air Force of India and France. So, we have a great defense cooperation, but that is not limited to the exercises that we conduct mutually and uh, together. It is also in the arena of the equipments we purchase. We know of the French Rafale, which was so much in news for good and not so good reasons. However, what we have to remember here is that Rafale came from France. Also, there was this Scorpion project, Scorpion project, P-75 Scorpion project is related to submarines, uh, construction of submarines from India. Again, France is playing a role for India in strengthening its maritime security and that is why P-75 project was signed. We remember INS Kalwari was the first submarine to be commissioned in October 2017. Six submarines are to be delivered to India. Also. India and France. France is among the few countries with which India has signed an agreement for provision of 
reciprocal logistic support between their armed forces means both their armies can mutually exchange or can provide if a need arises logistical support to each other it is not a simple thing it requires so much collaboration over a period of years so that the two armies can reach this stage that they can collaborate on this level so india and france have reached that state then coming to bilateral trade and economic relations now india and france trade is stood at 1.61 us dollars not a huge quantum in terms of money only thing to see here is that india imports less than it actually exports so this is the only take away from here also france is the 11th largest foreign investor in india uh, the quantum is not very important but france is the 11th largest foreign investor in india and of late is it is the leading european recipient of job related investment or job creating investment from india now among the leading because the first one is united kingdom 27% of india's investment in europe has gone to uk then it has gone to germany then into netherlands france is at the fourth number 7% job creating investment from india to france has gone over the last two years now space cooperation as we had discussed earlier is an important field which in which both these countries collaborate often names of few satellites are important you can remember them india's isro and french national space agency called cnes have many joint missions one is satellite megha tropicus megha means cloud in india tropicus maybe it is pronounced some something else but megha tropicus megha stands for cloud or badal in india tropicus is french for tropic so this was a satellite launched by india's pslv polar satellite launch vehicle there was another satellite called saral saral stands for satellite for argos and altica basically oceanic atmosphere and uh, ocean surface elevation is to be researched upon using this satellite so it is also a joint venture by these two countries then india's antrix or antrix it is called and french company called astrum sas they have also collaborated on certain projects so this last information is not that relevant name of these two satellites are important megha tropicus and saral these both of them are india and france's joint venture also air and space which is based in france it has provided several services to india's geostationary satellite launches also india has a thriving community of its nris in france almost more than 1 lakh people they reside in france also a landmark civil nuclear agreement was signed between india and france in 2008 so it is among the few countries with which india has a civil nuclear agreement now this mutual agreement is requires a special significance because of certain global scenarios of or because of geopolitics in in our present times why because there is a ukraine situation we have discussed multiple times that what is this ukraine situation we know that russia has amassed its troop on ukraine's border nato is also giving support to ukraine and world is on the cusp of a war so in such a situation both the ministers they exchanged their assessment india has taken quite a diplomatic position as of now because india has slightly different take on this issue unlike us and europe so because india is also looking forward to maintaining a very stable relationship with russia so that is why in this geopolitical situation these talks become important then there is focus on sustainable infrastructure there is focus on counter terrorism because both india and france have seen terrorist attacks and that is why they, this is one more field where they can collaborate then the situation of trade war uh, which engulfed the world or at least which threatened to engulf the world post 
First, there was a trade war between China and Russia, and then several other countries seemed to join it. So, this is also an arena where India and France can collaborate. Then, geopolitical and defense issues, as we discussed. Indian Ocean is a region where both these countries have similar interests. Then, India procures many of its defense equipments from France, as we discussed, Rafale. Apart from these issues, climate change, biodiversity, renewable energy, cyber security, digital technology, these are some other arenas where India and France can collaborate. Apart from that, both what are the common interests and issues? So, both these countries, both countries of India and France, they are maritime nations and they have dynamic maritime economy sectors. Both these countries, fisheries are a vital economic sector. Both these countries, since they have an important marine ecosystem to take care of, so they are aware that ocean has suffered the harmful effects of global warming and pollution. So, this is another area of common interest. Now, both are attached to international law of the sea. We discussed United Nations Convention on Law of Seas and how both of these countries find it necessary and important for that law to be upheld globally. Also, as we discussed, Indian Ocean is the common shared interest for both these countries. Indian Ocean obviously for India, but also for France because it has so many outposts in the Indian Ocean. Recently, uh, France became the 23rd member of the Indian Ocean Rim Association, Indian Ocean Rim Association, which is headquartered in Mauritius, recently took France as its member. This organization works for collaboration among the countries which share their border with Indian Ocean or which have their stakes in Indian Ocean. So again, this points towards increasing collaboration between India and France. Then the Chinese assertion and aggression, increasing positions of European powers in the Indo-Pacific, all these are the areas where French and Indian interests, they combine. So what is the conclusion on the basis of our discussion? This conclusion is that Indo-France strategic partnership is significant from European perspective as well. Because after the, because one, they are looking forward to maintaining separate independent ties with India, independent from US or any other country's influence, one. Then after China became assertive in global affairs, European countries, especially countries like France, they are looking forward to maintaining good and strong ties with countries like India, which can solve so many of the issues for which they are at present dependent on China, for example, for global supply chain. So, it is important from European perspective as well. Then India's infrastructure development and socio-economic programs, they provide long-term opportunities for greater technological cooperation and European investment. Then, blue economy is a vital sector. We discussed what is blue economy. It is a vital economic sector and it can play a decisive role in giving the livelihood security and food security to populations across the world. Then, both these entities, the European countries, the countries like France and India, they want to strengthen the international law of the sea and both these countries or on the same side when it comes to strategic issues related to the Indo-Pacific. So this is the conclusion. Now you have a question to practice your answer writing on. India-France partnership has acquired new, new significance in light of changing geopolitical situation. Discuss. So that is all for this episode of In News. See you tomorrow with a new episode. Till then, stay tuned.